Today, we're going to bust some commonly held myths and misconceptions around kidney stones and give you the real data that will help you reduce your risk of a kidney stone and other associated diseases by up to 90% or more. Now, the first myth we're going to be tackling is a common one, which is that kidney stones are no big deal. And in fact, they are a really big deal. Not only are they super painful when you have these sharp crystal stones working their way through your kidneys and your urinary tract, but number one, they're on the rise. So the incidence of kidney stones, especially in women, has increased by up to 50% over the past 10 years. So more and more people are likely to succumb to a kidney stone and have to deal with this problem. And once you get one kidney stone, your risk of having a second or a third stone is significant. Over 50% of people have a recurrence of kidney stones within the first few years. Now, that's not even the half of it because the worst part is that kidney stones are indicative of a metabolic problem that affects the rest of your body. And in fact, having kidney stones increases your risk of other common diseases that we associate with unhealthy aging. This includes high blood pressure, heart disease, kidney disease, osteoporosis. The list goes on and on. And the reason is pretty straightforward, which is that most kidney stones are made up of calcium oxalate. And that calcium is ending up in the kidneys and other organs instead of in the bones where it belongs. In fact, 85% of kidney stones are calcium oxalate. And the 15% that aren't calcium oxalate often have some element of calcium in them. So that brings us to the second myth that we want to tackle, which is that if we have calcium oxalate kidney stones, that we should reduce our intake of calcium in order to prevent stone formation. And that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, a New England Journal of Medicine trial looked at people who had a regular calcium intake in their diet versus those who consciously tried to decrease the amount of calcium in their diet and found that the people with a low calcium diet had twice the risk of a kidney stone versus those who had a normal calcium intake. So reducing calcium in the diet actually doubles your risk of having a kidney stone. Now, you might think, okay, I'm going to go supplement calcium as a way to mitigate that. However, again, another myth, calcium supplementation increases your risk of a kidney stone. So when we think about calcium in our diet, we should be thinking about getting enough calcium through food, but not getting it through supplementation because that calcium that we're getting through supplementation might be ending up in the wrong parts of our body, in the kidneys and in the vascular tract, rather than in the skeleton where we want it to build strong, healthy bones. Now you might be thinking if calcium in the diet isn't the problem, then maybe it's the oxalate in the diet that's a problem when we think about calcium oxalate stone formation. And again, this is 85% of kidney stones. Well, most oxalate in your body isn't ingested in pure oxalate from foods. Most foods have oxalates in them, but your body also creates oxalate through the metabolism of a lot of the foods that you eat. So there's no getting around oxalate in your body's metabolism. And in fact, when we look at the high oxalate foods, it's kind of counterintuitive that reducing your intake of these foods would improve your health. I mean, you've got walnuts and almonds, kale, spinach, whole grains, legumes, fruits, and berries. So these look like the constituents of a healthy diet, and it doesn't really make sense that limiting your intake of these foods would, you know, reduce your risk of a kidney stone. And as we're going to look later on in this presentation, high oxalate foods may actually be reducing your risk of that kidney stone through means that we got to get into later on. And the problem isn't the calcium or the oxalates in the diet. The problem is that they're combining and crystallizing in the urine, forming stones. We don't want to limit the amount of calcium, and we can't limit the amount of oxalate. What we can do is work to prevent them crystallizing in the urine 
and causing all of these problems. So this takes us to the question of what can we do to reduce our incidence of kidney stones? And the first thing we can do is increase the amount of fluid intake. Dehydration concentrates the urine and allows the calcium and oxalate to crystallize more readily. Drinking three liters of water a day and trying to get your daily urine output to two liters a day or more can dramatically reduce your incidence of kidney stones. In fact, with no other changes to the diet, studies show that increasing the amount of fluid to these levels of three liters per day or more can reduce your risk of a kidney stone by over 55%. And it also increases the duration of time between kidney stones by up to 50% as well. So you have fewer kidney stones and you have longer periods of time between recurrences of kidney stones. And that's by doing nothing other than drinking three liters of water daily. And if we look at this slide here, what we see is that increasing the amount of fluid in the diet from left to right decreases the amount of calcium and uric acid and other stone formation compounds in the urinary tract, therefore reducing your risk of those kidney stones. So hydration is super important and it's the easiest thing you can do in order to reduce the risk of that kidney stone. Now this takes us to what is perhaps the most powerful way that you can reduce your risk of kidney stones and reduce the risk of a lot of other diseases associated with unhealthy aging, and that is to increase the amount of potassium in the diet. You see, potassium in fruits and vegetables in particular is found in the form of potassium citrate. And citrate is a powerful way to alkalinize the urine and prevent calcium and oxalate from combining and forming those crystals that create the uh, stones. And studies show that 90% of people who have calcium oxalate stones are deficient in potassium citrate. So increasing the amount of potassium citrate through food or supplementation should be a super powerful way to reduce kidney stones and keep the calcium in the bones where it belongs and out of your blood vessels and your kidneys where it doesn't belong. Studies show that increasing the amount of potassium citrate through food or supplementation can have a dramatic reduction in your risk of kidney stones. Here we see that the reduction in risk across clinical trials is incredible. 60% reduction, 80% reduction, up to a 96% reduction in the risk of kidney stones simply by adding more potassium citrate in the diet. So where should you get your potassium? The good news is, is that potassium is readily available across most fruits and vegetables. In fact, a cup of cooked vegetables has about 500 milligrams of potassium on average, and a medium fruit has about 300 milligrams of potassium. So increasing the amount of fruits and vegetables in our diet is probably the easiest way that we can get higher intakes of potassium citrate in the diet. And it's why trying to reduce the amount of oxalates in the diet is the wrong idea, because if we look at that list of high oxalate foods, it also happens to be a lot of the foods that are highest in potassium citrate. So when we're talking about kidney stones, I want to bust this myth that reducing the amount of calcium, reducing the amount of oxalates in the diet is a good idea. Terrible idea. We want to stop that right now. And what we want to do is focus on the truth, which is that hydration and potassium are the two ways that you're going to, number one, dramatically reduce the risk of that kidney stone, but also by increasing the amount of potassium, largely from fruits and vegetables, that you're going to reduce the risk of kidney stones by up to 90% or more and reduce the risk of a lot of conditions that are associated with unhealthy aging. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're looking for more information on increasing potassium, please go to my website, daveclaytonmd.com. I'll teach you different ways that you can increase the amount of potassium in your diet safely and effectively so that you can see these results. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.